Hello, this is Mark Wildman of Wildman Athletica here with Junior Leo So of Landmine University at Human Fit 2023. Junior just taught a Landmine University certification here in Vieste, Human Fit 2023. It was an excellent, excellent program and anybody should do it if you are a trainer or if you work in any way. It fits into a big category of basic things. It is lifting and carrying. Can you tell us about the program? Yeah, sure. So Landmine University is a great alternative to traditional Olympic lifts. Uh, we think that there's a lot of carryover in this system for sports and athletic movement. So we tend to lean towards this style of system for team sports players, football players, basketball players, fighters, etc. What is the setup for Landmine University? What equipment do you need? So traditionally just a barbell. Uh, a Landmine attachment surely makes things easier. It's not super mandatory. Uh, you could even stuff the end of a barbell in a boot, stuff it against a wall. Uh, but a landmine attachment these days are very affordable, 40 to 60 bucks, and they'll last a lifetime. What total equipment do you recommend that people have in order to do this training properly? I think the second step that you would have to get would be some weight plates, so that as you get to the progressive overload and you're starting to build some strength, you could add some load. So in total, you're looking at a barbell, a landmine attachment, and some plates. So you're looking in the range of $300 at, at the low end to start with semi-decent equipment that's yep. not gonna die immediately. Agreed, that's about right. What are the core movements that you guys are working on in Landmine University? So we work on things like uh, a clean, a deadlift, and a press, and we just apply our principles to those things. Um, so really working on the spinal engine theory and, and the coiling core theory that's been put out there for functional movement. And we try to marry those two things together with those traditional lifts. Tell us what spinal Spinal engine theory. Spinal engine theory is because it's basically the exact same theory that goes into heavy club swinging and into endurance kettlebell lifting. The layman version of the spinal engine theory is that we derive our power and generate power initially through the spine. Where traditionally we may have thought the arms or the legs would be the power for the locomotion, we now know that the spine drives that initial energy force. So now that we know that, we base our training around that theory. Excellent. So this is exactly like kettlebells and clubs. So I think that Landmine has a perfect spot in between these things. Kettlebells, you work on deadlifts, you work on swings, which is a deadlift analog, a clean, a press, you work on snatches. You work on all the exact same stuff with Landmine University, which is why I instantly was like, this is a great idea. <laughs> what are you doing? You're doing cleans. The landmarks, landmarks are the same. Tell us what landmarks are and then I'll talk about why they're the same. Yeah, sure. So landmarks for us are just a, uh, a cue to let the client know or to get the athlete to get into proper position. And for us, the landmark is simply where the elbow and the hip meets on the short side of the body. Good. This is exactly like the way I coach kettlebells. When I talk about kettlebell rack, I'm talking about people marrying their elbow to their hip all the way down and having their thumb at collarbone height with their biomechanical alignment good. I talk about the exact same thing with heavy club swinging with say inside circles, every movement begins and ends with the elbow at the hip. If you find the same idea in vastly different systems with different tools, it's probably a really good idea. So Landmine University is using almost the exact same language that I use about cueing elbow to hip, and they even use the same cues in order to get people to activate their lat. They're doing a lot more roll of the spine because they're generating the endpoint athletic positions, which is an excellent complement to the things that I talk about all the time. I love that. Will you tell us about the seminars? Sure, so we offer two styles of seminars. The first is our workshop. The workshop is a 60 minute workout program that we put together for general fitness. This will be great for something for a coach to teach their clients at the gym or for a coach to teach their athletes. Then secondly, we have the, uh, the certification course, which is what we did today. This is a more in depth course, typically eight to nine hours over the course of two days uh, that will give a trainer or a coach all that they need to teach this program and teach this successfully. So tell us what are the main things that you're teaching in kind of the order that you teach them in because it will be almost exactly the same as what I teach, which is what I think is amazing. So in the coaches course, we talk about uh, covering our principles, which are understanding the, the landmark, understanding what a long side and a short side is, establishing what forward intent is and why that's important, and then going through the progressions of movements like the deadlift, the snatch, and the clean, using those prior systems. We do some minimal movements in between to help cue those big movements later, um, and that system should flow easily from start to finish. Excellent.
So the thing that really separates this from everything else is the forward pressure idea. For the most part, when you start training something like kettlebells, you train two feet pointed straight ahead because that's the way you walk, that's the way you run, and you put your heels down flat on the ground and you work on standing all the way up. When Landmine University takes it, they take that standing position, they do the same thing that you do in kettlebells, which is turn your body into a rigid plank, but they lean forward like a Michael Jackson thriller <laughs> yeah. lean forward. And then they, can, they drive up out of their calves to create that forward pressure from the ball of the foot, through the ankle, through the knee, through the hip, into the rib cage, into their landmark elbow to hip position. It is amazing. So this fills an absolutely crucial need for people to learn to propel something like their kettlebell power forward. So think kettlebells standing straight up and down, think clubs yawing, rotating about the vertical axis, but essentially standing straight up and down. Landmine takes that straight up and down and tips it into forward pressure from the ground up. I immediately thought that this is barbell Pilates and it is as absolutely awful as the athlete can generate the intent to do. If you sandbag it, you could probably do it wrong, just like Pilates, just like anything. But if you roll into these positions and generate all the cues on the way down, which they are doing through excellent coaching technique, it is filling a need of pressure from the pad of the foot up that's not covered in really anything else that I can think of other than sled pushing. Yeah. But this is like the hyper technical version. People can sled push wrong forever. This would be a stacking in program, which would help people make sure that they're lining up all their joints. Very true. So it's a deadlift, moves into a clean, moves yep. into foot movement. So now we have split stand stuff like split jerks, which yep. is fat, fast foot movement but they're changing all of that by making it long and short side, yes. which is something you don't really do with kettlebells. You could do it with kettlebells with sure. some different stuff, but it's not the way that say endurance kettlebell lifting yeah. works. Very true. Um, where do you run your programs at? So the programs can be in person or online. Uh, anybody could go to landmineuniversity.com and take the virtual certification. Uh, this will give everybody everything they need to know, easy to follow along, complete the cert, so that they can start implementing this at their gym. If you're lucky enough to be in a place or travel to a place where we have insert in-person courses, um, that would probably be the best as we could get some hands on the body, we can make some adjustments in real life. Uh, these happen just about every 60 days somewhere in the world. Uh, currently, my partners, as we speak, is uh, launching the certification in Chicago uh, while we're oh, here in Vieste, Italy. So this, is, this has been a blessing. We've been in just about every state. Um, so in person and online. This is a good, simple system. And I like the idea. They have their online training program first, front load your information, but go to the in-person one because getting the hands-on coaching is always correct. Makes all the difference. When people come to my seminars, people are prepared because they do the same thing. They do all the videos ahead of time. But here's the interesting thing. You don't know what you don't know. So people think that they're doing it right going and talking to a real coach who knows their material inside and out makes sure that you are completing some loop that you are unaware that you are not completing. That is the most important thing. You do your prep, but eventually you go out, you learn from good people, you come back, and every time you do that, it should get better. So my plan is to do about three of these because if you, why not? Why not? Just yeah. do three of them. Come to three live events. Get the same information over and over yeah. and over again. Talk it, say it, do it. Eventually you get good at it on accident. The goal is to be good at everything. So the true benefit that we see with our style of lifting versus traditional Olympic lifts is really a big deal when it comes to the carryover in team sports. So the way a football player runs, cuts, jumps, throws a ball, catches a ball, is a lot more reflective of the movements we take versus the traditional Olympic movements uh, that we've been doing forever. Whereas that is not a bad thing, we just feel like ours is a little bit more comparable to the way that we're gonna play. So if somebody's really focused on getting a bigger bench, bigger squat, bigger deadlift, you need to do those traditional Olympic lifts. If the goal is to become uh, stronger in your sport and you wanna be doing something functional, our system is gonna lean the hand better for that person to carry over that lifting technique to the field or to the court.
Yeah, so symmetrical stance, two feet pointed straight ahead. When you lift a barbell, that barbell moves in generally a straight line up and down. You move your body around it. When you do something like running, everything is cross body. You're changing from one muscle chain in your body to the other muscle chain. This is a specific way of loading that. So I think that this would fill in kettlebells as strength endurance, high rep, long periods of time, turning it into endurance, standing, and then infinite complexity. Heavy clubs, yawing, rotating around your vertical axis is all your pure throwing patterns. But this is like Olympic lifting. The reps are low, the weight starts to go up, and you do three sets of three, five sets of five, and you can track your data on the same sheet the same uh, thing that you would track your Olympic lifts on. The only difference is you would add a left and a right category because it's not symmetrical, you have both sides. This falls into the type of training that I like to advocate for a lot because it's generally cheap. It's way cheaper than Olympic lifting. Olympic lifting, you probably need a platform if you're gonna do it with heavy weights without destroying whatever building you're in. You probably need boxes, you probably need a rack. You're looking at, to get into Olympic lifting and do it really effectively, you're probably at the super, super dead cheap end at a thousand. In order to do it well, you're probably at at least 1,700 to 2,000. If you're gonna get the Gucci kit, you're in the 3,000 to $3,500 range. This, you can be into for three or $400. Same as a competition adjustable kettlebell, same as an ADEX adjustable club system. So for $1,000, you could get an infinite amount of training out of a kettlebell, an infinite amount of training out of a club, and severe straight line forward pressure power training out of $300 worth of barbells and stuff like that. So it fits into the overall idea of being accessible, being affordable, and fitting in a small space. You don't have to have a giant rack in order to do it, and the odds of you putting a hole in your floor are fairly low. You could probably do this in an apartment in London. You could do it in New York. Sure. You can do it in a barn. You could put it all in the back of a truck and drive across the country and pull it out and do it in a big field. Sure. So, so much good stuff inside of this one idea. If you were to run a gym with these three ideas of kettlebell, club, and landmine, I think you would create absolute monsters and just getting the knowledge in coaches for people to implement that idea yeah. is what I think will really catapult the general health and fitness of Agreed. everything. Agreed. Where is your current base for Landmine University? Uh, Landmine University home base for us was in San Diego, California at Pacific Beach Training in Pacific Beach, San Diego. Uh, the founder, Alex Canellis, is in Iowa City where he teaches regularly there. Um, and then my next location is in Maui, Hawaii, where Maui. we teach there quite often as well. This is a great excuse to go to Maui. I'm going to go to Maui. <laughs> yeah, exactly.